Hello and welcome to another episode of the Breachside Broadcast, home of the finest foxcasting either side of the breach. On today's episode, we continue the story of Anna Karras and Tony Ironsides as they fight for the future of the Miners and Steamfitters Union. But will their different visions tear the Union apart from the inside? I hope you enjoy the conclusion of A Line Drawn in Fire, right after this word from our sponsor. This episode of the Breachside Broadcast is brought to you by Pembroke Alley Brassworks. We manufacture everything from pipe fittings to euphoniums. This week only, we have a special deal on brass knuckles. Ten for the price of five. They really pack a punch, so come down and grab yourself a fistful. Tony was in a foul mood when she left the factory. Von Osling knew his stuff, despite his demeanour and the stench of his breath, and he knew how to get under her skin, too. Every counteroffer had been wrapped in implications of her guilt, every concession laden with promises of future alliance, and every barb toss with the precision of a master hunter. The idea that she would work to further the guild's ambitions rankled Tony. The fact that she'd given them what they wanted, Ramos, on a silver platter, well, that was just salt in the wound. Her caravan waited outside the factory doors. Five carriages, all loyal men and women, people Tony knew she could trust. They were faithful to more than just the Union. They were faithful to her. How had it come to this? How had she let things get this far out of hand? She knew that handing Ramos over to the Guild would have consequences, the kind of trouble that she was good at sorting out, or so she thought. But this was far more than dragging a rogue steam fitter down a back alley and beating the loyalty back into his head. The MNSU was splintering apart, like a mining joist trying to hold up too much of a mountain. People died in these kind of fights. People Tony should be fighting next to, not against. Tony's driver swung smoothly down from her seat and opened the armoured door of the carriage. A little behind schedule, Miss Ironsides, she said. We'll have to cut a few corners if we're going to make it to the docks by nightfall. Cancel the docks. Hell, cancel the whole thing, Tony said wearily. You like get back to HQ. I'll be along. Mom? I'm walking, Tony said. She turned sharply on her heel and passed by the proffered door. Need to clear my lungs a little. This is hardly the place for a stroll, Mom, the driver said. Let's get you back to the offices and then... I don't give orders twice. Now get out of here before the guildies get curious. I'll be fine. After some hesitation, the carriages rumbled off. Tony walked in the opposite direction, toward the slums. She knew she was taking a risk, walking unescorted through the streets of Malifaux, but Ironsides had cut her teeth in back alleys and fighting pits twice as dangerous as this place, especially so close to the factories. She was still the girl who could scrap her way out of any kind of trouble. And maybe a little trouble was exactly what she needed right now. A shadow detached itself from a nearby building, trailing in Tony's wake for a couple blocks before disappearing. Another took its place, joined by another, then another. They were creeping closer. Tony slowed her pace. Wouldn't want to outrun the wolves, would she? Besides, if she ran, they would only tire themselves out, and that would ruin the fun for everybody. She risked a glance over her shoulder. A half-dozen ready-looking roughs, still carrying their coal shovels and steam pipes, 
out for a pleasant afternoon stroll. Tony had to suppress a grin. Maybe if she sped up a little bit, they'd get anxious and strike. She started looking around for a dead-end alleyway to accidentally rush down, something nice and tight, away from prying ears that might call the patrol and spoil her exercises. There, she thought, spying an alleyway nestled between two abandoned warehouses, the entrance choked with broken machinery and rotting garbage. That's the kind of place terrible things happen to nice people like me. Perfect. Tony jammed her hands nervously into her pockets, lowering her head as she trotted into the alleyway. Once she was out of sight, she started to loosen up, fitting her brass knuckles over her fingers and bouncing anxiously on the balls of her feet. Her breathing came fast and light, her heartbeat singing in rhythm with her fists. This was good. It had been too long. Long moments passed with Tony in her light stance. The minutes stretched. Her heartbeat calmed. The adrenaline burned out of her blood. She wrinkled her brow. Finally, Tony walked to the end of the alleyway and looked around. The street was empty. Come on, guys, she whispered. I really expected more of you lot. Hello, Tony. The voice came from overhead, as calm and delicate as an angel. Tony twisted around and looked up. Ah, there it is, she said. Karis came crashing down out of the sky, her golden wings whistling through the air, trailing flames in her wake. Tony barely had time to cover her head before Karis slammed into her. She went tumbling to the ground. A gust of scolding air told her that Karis was back in the air. Tony bounced to her feet and looked around. The intersection was deserted. She caught a glimpse of flickering light reflecting off the abandoned warehouse as Karis disappeared around the corner. Anna, Tony shouted. She danced lightly from foot to foot, keeping her center calm but constantly turning. This really isn't your style, is it? Leave the skulking in shadows to the creeps. You're brighter than that. Is that supposed to be a joke? Kara's voice echoed through the empty streets. Just trying to lighten the mood, girl. Come on. I'm sure we can work this out, Tony said. Kara swooped out of an alleyway, down the street, and came roaring down on Tony. Her fists clutched balls of molten flame. Tony whirled to face her, taking the brunt of the attacks across her forearms, but the heat and licking flame was enough to drive her back. Kara whistled past, trailing a line of fire in the air. Just gonna duck and run, eh? Tony shouted. She rubbed her nose, and her thumb came away bloody. That's fine. That's cool. I'm sure leaving me as a pile of bones in the street will send a clear message. They have no interest in messages, Ironsides. Karis hovered around the corner of a building, her golden wings bending delicately around etheric updrafts, riding unseen winds. You have betrayed the trust of the man who brought you up. Without Ramos... You would still be lurching from fight to fight in the back rooms, scraping your teeth off the walls along with our pay. I know what I did, Anna. And I know what I did it for. Tony circled warily, cutting the distance between herself and Karis. You would have done the same thing in my position. And if you were in mine, we would still be right here having this conversation. So why are we still talking? Sometimes talk in soul shit, Tony said. She slammed her fists together. And sometimes it doesn't. Karis grimaced and swooped forward, carrying the speed of her flight into Ironside's jaw. Tony braced herself and rolled away from the blow, then staggered to the side and straightened up. Karis came at her in a windmill of fists, blows glancing off Tony's raised forearms and the sides of her head, or occasionally burying into her belly or kidneys. Tony fought back, but only jabbing hard enough to drive Karis on, to anger the burning angel to greater heights of fury. Karis' wings buffeted the air, keeping her upright and swinging. How much of this you got in you, kid? Tony wondered. She blocked a kick, rolled her weight into a heavy block to the midsection, then poked at Karis' face with an open palm. Because I can do this all day. With a grunt, Karis floated back, 
sweeping her wings in long strokes that raised clouds of dust. Tony tried to close the distance, but Karis drove her back with a series of arcing flame strikes that sizzled through the air. Tony's mouth filled with the stink of sulfur and ash. She skated to the side as Karis laid a lash of flame down hard in front of her. The cobblestones under Tony's boots cracked. She jumped behind the corner of a building and knelt down. Her breath was coming in ragged gasps, and the skin of her forearms was blistering from the heat. She craned her neck to the sky. Karis was circling, looking for the right moment to strike. I'm going to have to do something about those wings, Tony muttered to herself. She looked around. Warehouse is no good, and most of these other buildings are just kindling. I need some place built to withstand heat. The pieces clicked together in her mind. Tony smiled. Going to have to update your safety protocols, you bastard. Leaping out of cover, Ironsides ducked into the street and started to run. A line of flames stitched across her path, forcing her to the side of the road, hemming her in against the abandoned warehouse. Screaming, she covered her face and leapt over the blaze. Flames licked her boots and pitted her pants with burning cinders. She landed and rolled shoulder to heel. Falling was the only thing that saved her. A blossom of flame erupted in front of her, turning an unattended carriage into embers. Plumes of black smoke lifted into the air, choking Tony's lungs and blotting out the sky. Fortunately, it also gave her a little cover. She could hear Karis flying low overhead, circling, searching. The metallic clatter of her wings echoed through the streets. Tony crept forward. She caught a glimpse of Karis hovering over the ruins of the carriage. You can't hide forever, Ironsides, and you aren't the type to run, Karis called out. She was spinning slowly in place, her wings corkscrewing through the air. Face your judgment. Face me. Nah, Tony muttered, just as Karis was turning away. As quietly as possible, she ran at the spinning angel. Something must have tipped Karis off, though, because she whirled around just as Tony reached her. A jet of flame tore through the air just above Tony's head. She ducked, scrambled forward, and grabbed at Karis' heel. Karis tried to flee, but Tony grabbed her boot, dragging her back to earth. Golden wings pummeled Tony's head, metal feathers slicing the armoured shoulders of her coat and drawing thin lines of blood from her cheeks and exposed forearms. Tony punched hard into Karis' leg, just above the knee. She heard something crack, and Karis screamed in pain and rage. Tony chased the falling woman through the air, slamming into her midsection to drive her to the ground. The wings folded over Karis' head, protecting her from the worst of Tony's attack. No! Karis screamed. It does not end like this! She spread her wings wide, throwing Tony back. A rippling halo of flame formed around Karis' head. Bright fire, brighter than the sun. It pulsed, and small fires leapt to life on Tony's jacket, her legs, even her skin. You have done your worst, Ironsides. It's time to feed the flames. Rather not, Tony gasped. She turned and ran. Time for plan B. Karis followed. She burned a path in the sky, cutting through the low-hanging cloud and scattering the black plumes of smoke that choked the air. Tony weaved and bobbed, running from cover to cover, while the flickering flames of Karis' fury licked at her boot heels. Tony turned a corner and heard startled shouts up ahead. She lowered her head and sprinted forward. Karis saw what she was trying to do and screamed in frustration. Ironsides burst through the front doors of the Tapperson Street Golem Works like a battering ram. Von Ostling was standing at the foot of his labyrinthine stairwell, deep in discussion with one of the floor supervisors. Miss Ironsides, Ostling said, I hardly expected you to return so soon. Is there something we missed in our negotiations, or... A curtain of flames descended through the shattered doors, washing over the machinery closest to the factory's entrance. Metal popped and whined as critical temperatures were exceeded in the blink of an eye. A small gathering of workers scattered from the flames. Ostling threw his folio into the air and scurried up the stairwell, making better time than Ironsides thought possible. A klaxon blared in the rafters. 
Garrus descended into the ruin of the factory's front entrance like an angel of death and flame. Sheets of flame washed off her wings, and the halo that circled her head was so bright it looked like a ring carved out of reality itself. Her eyes burned with white-hot fury, and balls of molten flame wreathed her fists in coruscating light. Her eyes swept the factory floor, locking on iron sides. Fleeing to your friends in the guild, her voice reverberated with the roar of Hell's own furnace. They can't save you, Ironsides. No one can. Tony didn't bother answering. The factory floor was choked with machinery, all of it tempered to handle the molten steel of the assembly line, and the ceilings hung low, bristling with catwalks, power conduits, and other engines of industry. There wasn't five feet of flyable space in the whole factory. It was perfect. I'm sure you don't want to talk this out, Anna? Tony shouted from behind the cover of a crucible forge. Garrus responded by blasting the steel cauldron with a gout of flame. A union worker yelped and fled from his hiding place at the base of the machine, disappearing in the other direction. You don't want to kill our own people, do you? You fled here, not me. You chose to run, not me and you will stand accused of their deaths should any fall under my flames. At least give them time to escape, Tony answered. They have nothing to do with this. Karis hovered just inside the door. After several long moments, she lifted her hands. The flames that shrouded her lifted, clearing the way to the doors. Workers boiled up out of the assembly line, keeping their heads down as they streamed to the gaping hole in the wall. Tony stood up and stretched her back. Several of the workers nodded to her as they fled. Need a hand, boss? One asked. Management dispute, she answered. Above your pay grade. The man tugged at his cap, then followed the rest out of the factory. Tony noticed that none of the guild supervisors were among the escapees. She glanced up at Ostling's office. She saw the man's thin face peering out of the thick windows. He waved to her then lowered iron shutters that sealed the office away from the factory floor. Seconds after the last worker slipped through the broken doors, a second klaxon sounded. Steel gates slammed down over the gap, sealing them inside. Karis glanced over her shoulder and smiled. It seems the guild is willing to sacrifice their factory if it means your death, Karis said. Or yours, Tony answered. Either way, they win. Don't feign loyalty now, Ironsides. You've shown your colors already. I'm not going to argue with you, Anna. Nothing I say is going to convince you to end this, Tony said. So what are you waiting for? You seem to like clever banter. I thought I'd give you a moment to think of something smart to say. Tony cocked her head and thought about it. Finally, she shook her head. Nah, I've got nothing. Very well, Keris said. The halo over her head reignited. It cast harsh shadows over the assembly line floor, drawing the world in red and black. Thought of something, Tony said. She kicked an abandoned wrench onto the toe of her boot, then snapped her foot forward. The wrench pinwheeled into Kara's face, cracking her on the chin. Tony closed the gap as fast as she could. She lay fists into Kara's belly, her ribs, knocking her back against the assembly line belt. The machinery caught Kara's mid-thigh toppling her. Garrus fought back. A pulse of heat washed off her, driving Tony onto her heels. She followed up with a series of quick strikes meant to keep Tony off balance. Unfortunately for her, Tony was not the kind of girl to lose her balance in a fight. Gonna have to do better than that, Tony hissed, as she slid out of Garrus' reach. The old man didn't teach you any good tricks? Only one, but I'm sure you'll see it coming, Garrus answered. She was on the ground now her wings folded, close to her shoulders, protecting her kidneys. She looked a little winded. She clasped her hands in front of her, drawing an orb of churning flame out of the ether. It's hard not to telegraph. The flames streaked through the air. Tony danced aside, barely avoiding the roiling firebolt. As it passed, the heat of the bolt crisped her hair and drew embers across Tony's jacket. It exploded behind her. Tony jumped forward before Karis could pull any other high-temperature trickery. She grabbed Karis by the shoulders, 
and shoved her against a giant machine that the fleeing workers had left running. Pistons groaned and popped against the metal of her wings, talking the harness painfully against Kara's chest. The woman screamed in frustration, her eyes burning from smoldering red to forge bright white. The scrolling embers on Tony's jacket fanned to life, bursting into flames as Kara's rage stoked them into an inferno. Tony fell back, beating at the flames with blister-laced hands. The firebolt that had missed Tony earlier had found something else flammable. An explosion rocked the floor, and flaming shrapnel and burning pitch arced into the air to scatter off the closed ceiling and rain down on the pair of combatants. A wall of black smoke washed over them. Tony crumpled to the floor, coughing, her eyes stinging in the haze. When she looked up again, Karis was gone. She pulled her jacket up, partially covering her face, and stumbled into the darkness. Anna, they've closed the vents. We're going to cook in this place if you don't... She cut off, interrupted by jagged coughing that shook her lungs. If you don't stop with the burning thing. If that's the price, Karis said. She loomed out of the roiling smoke, bright wings spread wide. One of her eyes was swollen shut but the other burned with fire and rage. At least you'll be taken care of. Karis, you have to... Oof! Tony stopped short. Karis' fist was in her belly, rapidly followed by a boot on both elbows. Tony curled around herself, closing her forearms to protect against the attack. Karis just shifted her attention to Tony's kidneys, her knees, the small of her back. Tony reeled back. She stumbled against a whirling engine of white-hot metal. Her flesh sizzled at the touch. There is no escape for you, Ironsides, Karis said. Part of the factory collapsed behind her, filling the air with a shower of sparks. You have betrayed your last ally. The Union will no longer strain under the burden of... A bullet whizzed past Karis' head. She looked up to see guild sharpshooters in the rafters. They wore heavy flame gear and respirators. Or we could both die, Tony croaked. And what will become of the Union, then? Suddenly you care, Kera said, when it's your life on the line. Another rafter collapsed. It fell into a boiling cauldron of molten metal, tipping the bowl over and flooding the concrete floor. Kera stared at the slow tide of sunbright liquid as it lapped toward them. Very well, she said. The guild first, and then we settle our debt. She swooped forward grabbing Tony by the collar. Ironsides flinched back, but with a leap of unnatural speed, Karis dragged her into the air and threw her at the rafters. Tony landed in a sprawling heap, right next to the guild guardsman. Bad day for you, she muttered. She hopped onto her feet, popping the first guild rifleman in the throat, then tearing his respirator free and kicking him onto his back. His compatriot slowly turned, only just realizing that his position was compromised. Tony gave him a single shove. He fell into the spreading lake of molten metal below, screaming as his lungs filled with burning steel. And as for the rest of you, Tony said, but when she looked around, the rest of the riflemen were running away. Eyes still stinging, she rubbed her nose and shrugged. Yes, they really weren't here to fight. She realized the error seconds later. They were merely catching the last train out of town. The rafter she was on shook and leaned dangerously to the side. She grabbed the railing, but it was hot as hell. Tony yelped and pulled her hand away, leaving skin behind. She looked down just in time to see Kara swoop out through a collapsed wall. The rafter started to fall. The far end tumbled into a still intact cauldron, the metal grating melting in a heartbeat. Tony slid down the suddenly steep walkway, rolling against hissing metal and shattered framework. The bubbling surface of the cauldron drew closer and closer. At the last second, a hand grabbed her throat and dragged her away. Tony looked up to see Kara's face streaked with ash. The woman threw her against the remnants of an outer wall. Tony burst through, rolling and bouncing until she came to a halt against an alley wall. She stood unsteadily. The factory was fully consumed, pillars of smoke reaching into the sky and bright flames dancing against the ruined brick. Tony let out a long, slow whistle. Pretty sure that's going to be a safety violation, she said. 
Karis landed next to her. The woman's trench coat was pitted with cinders, and her skin was covered in ash. Tony cracked her back. Well, now that we've got that out of the way, can we just talk about... Kara's fist landed squarely on Tony's jaw. She stumbled back, her head spinning. Karis raised her hands, and a rippling halo of flame broke over her head like a storm cloud. She rose slowly into the air and swept forward. I guess you're serious, Tony mumbled. Deadly, Karis answered. You betrayed the Union, the Arcanists, and yourself. Ramos lifted you up. He deserved better. Still hovering, she held her hands out in supplication. I am here to make sure you never do that again. Did I? Have you been paying attention, Anna? What did Ramos do for you, for the Arcanists? Tony danced aside as a stream of fire scorched the wall behind her. The halo around Kara's head pulsed, and an aura of flame surrounded Tony's shoulders. She shook it off. Anna, listen to me for a second. Everything that I am came from him. Everything we are, Ironsides, the Union, the Arcanists, we owe it all to him. That's bullshit and you know it. Tony danced forward, throwing a feint at Kara's hips, then twisted out of the way as blazing light coursed over her, finally re-engaging with her opponent. They exchanged a quick rain of blows that left Karis winded and Tony gleaming. They stood across from one another, breathing heavily, weighing each other. Yes, Ramos helped us, but not for us, for himself. We were his tools, Anna. We always have been. That doesn't give you the right to betray him. The Arcanists, the Union, are about freedom, without the guild breathing down our necks. And that's why Ramos had to go. He was being reckless with Union resources. He was pursuing his own goals, risking the guild's wrath and the Arcanist mission. He was putting us all in danger. That's not... Karis charged forward, swinging wildly at Tony's jaw. She blocked, slipping inside Karis' reach to grab the thick leather straps of the woman's harness. Your decision! Karis slammed her elbow into Tony's temple, striking again and again until Ironsides crumpled, falling to her knees. To make... Enough of this, Tony spat. She rose suddenly, putting the full strength of her body into her fist, driving it into Kara's jaw. The woman's teeth cracked together mid-scream. Tumbling backward, Kara's wings scraped at the air, trying to keep her upright and flying. Tony closed fast, landing blow after blow into Kara's midsection, keeping at it until a final sweep of the woman's wings pulled her out of range. Karis arced away, finally settling heavily onto the ground a block away. Tony straightened up, cracking her neck. She loped slowly toward Karis. The woman was struggling to stand, her eyes unfocused as she tottered on unstable feet. Golden wings fluttered against the cobblestones like a wounded bird. An aura of flame sputtered over Karis' shoulders, snapping and crackling like a candle in a hard wind. Let's try this again, Anna. Tony said. What are we doing here? What are we accomplishing? Whose work are we doing? Now you'll think of the consequences, Tony, Karis said. She struggled to her feet, wincing against the pain in her jaw. She held out a hand, and a crown of flame burst from her head. Tony held up her hands. Whoa, whoa now, hang on. This has gone on long enough, Tony said. Kara stared at her for a long moment, eyes struggling to focus. The flame went out with a snap. Tony nodded. I think we've both made our points. My head hurts, Karis mumbled. Yeah, mine too. All of me, really, Tony answered. She rubbed her shoulder, and charred fabric flaked off her coat. You really need to rein that shit in, girl. I was trying to kill you, Karis answered. Yeah, well, maybe I deserved it. Tony got a little closer. Karis backed up. The Union can't survive this, Anna. It can't have its leaders tearing each other apart, especially now. Should have thought of that before you shipped Ramos to the Guild, Karis straightened, wings spread for balance. 
She wiped blood from her nose. Whatever he was doing, he deserved better than that. Ramos had one loyalty. Victor Ramos. And as much as he did for me, and for the rest of the MNSU, my loyalty doesn't lie with him. It lies with the Union, with the Arcanists, same as you. Karis grimaced, though Tony wasn't sure if it was from pain or the grim reality of Tony's argument. They stood across from each other, shoulders heaving. I can't keep doing this, Anna, Tony said. I can't be looking over my shoulder watching for you or anyone else. I need my attention to be on the Union, and my guard to be against the Guild and every other damn monster that calls this Hell Hall home. I have enough enemies. I can't afford another at my side. Karis didn't move. The flames burning in her eyes flickered angrily, but her fists slowly uncurled. Finally, she rose slightly into the air. Tony buckled down, ready for another round. Ramos worked for Ramos, Karis said. For a long time that was good for the Union, good for me. She flexed her wings, gathering flames around her head. And maybe that was no longer true. But that does not justify trading him to the Guild. No, it probably doesn't, Tony admitted. I should have talked to you about it first. But the Guild didn't come to you, because you would never have listened. Too much history. I had to make the decision. And I would make it again. Yes, you would, Keris said. Perhaps the Guild knew it would come to this when they approached you. Perhaps this was their plan all along. I wouldn't put it past them. So. Tony dropped her guard, raising her chin to Karis. Are we going to go along with their plans, or are we going to make our own? Karis hesitated. Tony could feel her hatred, could almost feel Karis' anger washing over her, feel the flames cracking her bones. It was all she could do to remain still waiting for the blow to fall. It never did. Never again, Tony, Karis whispered. The Union needs us to stand together. But if you ever do this again, I swear to God, I will burn you from the inside out. Stronger alliances have formed on less dangerous promises, Tony said. She extended her hand. Allies until enemies. Karis stared at Ironside's outstretched hand. After several long moments, she twitched her wings and flew away, leaving Tony alone on the street. Tony watched her go, until those golden wings were nothing but a twinkle in the choking clouds that passed for a night sky in Malifaux. Better than nothing, I suppose, Tony mumbled to herself, for now at least. Ironsides gathered herself and limped down the street. She had meetings in the morning, and her head was killing her. That's it for another episode of the Breachside Broadcast. Join us next time for more Tales of Malifaux.